Hey, it's a little stuffy in here. Can you open that window? Hello, hello! Welcome back! I cannot believe it. Season two, season two, a year later, and it's obviously a little bit more than a year later, but a year later! Oh my God. So it is very exciting. We have a lot of things to talk about. Today, we will, I will have my episode with Rafal Al Harbi, which will be the one about fresh starts. But before we start, I do want to say a disclaimer. So views and opinions expressed in the podcast are our own and do not represent that of our places of work. This content should not be taken seriously and is for entertainment purposes only. Look, I'm glad we got that out of the way because I have to say a very important line. Welcome, welcome, and have a seat. Okay, I'm so excited for this episode. As you guys can see, if you are watching the video content that is available on YouTube, as you can see right now, I'm in a complete new space. Look at my little uh, records I have here, my vinyl records, some of my favorite uh, music, and also my new apartment. So if you do not know, I have moved. I uh, What hasn't happened over this year? Honestly, I moved. You know, I caught COVID. I, <laughs> I, I did everything. I have a new degree. I'm working on my master's degree at the University of Nebraska Omaha. So if you uh, have not seen my updates on my personal um, Instagram, I'm telling you now, you're, it's it's coming to you piping hot. So, so many things to discuss, and I'll be able to discuss them with my lovely, lovely guest today, um, Rafal Al Harbi. So, please let me welcome my one of my best friends and a superstar mogul. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But let me welcome my best friend, Rafal. Woo! Oh, look at her. Did you like that introduction? Yeah, but I was kind of disappointed because you were saying, let me welcome my best friend. And then you were like, one of my best friends. It's like, oh, oh my God. Look, we, we, we need to get this out of the way. Rafal is one of my closest friends and period because she has been oh well let's let, let's get a, a nice shot here we're both holding our mugs okay I'm glad I was able to have that sip now I feel rejuvenated so before we move anywhere I'm going to give it an opportunity for uh, Rafal to introduce herself talk about you know what she's doing in life has she graduated what's her major what is she doing in the future so this is a moment just for the for the people who are listening to meet you because if you don't know she was on my last season she was on the episode about the one about concerts and the people you know. just couldn't get enough of me I had to come back Honestly, she was. She, it was by popular demand. They were just like, honestly, she doesn't come back. I'm not gonna listen to a breath of fresh sight anymore. And I'm just like, okay, okay, calm down, guys, calm down. <laughs> so I was just like, how? Stop, I get shy. Stop. Honestly, and I was just like, we 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 should start the season, um, with a bang, with a familiar face, with a loved face. So I'm just like, this is perfect. Not saying the other people are not loved, but like you know, um, well, Rafal best. has been on season one, so it just it made sense to me. So. Be, I need to stop talking and I'm just really excited. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, let's keep talking. So let me give it over to my best friend, Rafal, to introduce herself. Well, um, my name is Rafal. I just gra technically graduated junior. I mean, I'm still doing one course right now. I'm in doing my last summer course and then I have to do my internship. So I finished um, banking and finance and then about to become a corporate slave. I'm so excited. <laughs> no, oh my God, continue, continue introducing yourself. So right now I'm literally just finishing my last course and like trying to soak up all the like last bits of freedom. Cause I know after I finish my internship, it's just gonna be one thing after the other that I need to get done. So this is literally one of my last few moments of like complete free time even though i still have one course but it's it's a very silly course so yeah right now i'm just trying to finish this and then taking it one day at a time seeing what the future has for me 
Look, I'm so glad that you're using one of your free bits to just spend time with me on my podcast. <laughs> and if you if you guys do not know, um, me and Rafal met. What like I feel like so me and her were we knew each of each other like in around grade five, like six. And no, grade was, six. Grade six. Grade six. And she yeah. was friends with one of my literally childhood friends, um, Ruf- oh. Ru'a. So they we don't talk to- about her. We don't talk about her right now. She's kind we don't of like her. <laughs> no, we're joking. We love Ra, but we just had like a huge fight with her two days ago. Yeah, we so, <laughs> so let, let's talk about this. Like Ra is the most passionate human being. So it's so funny when she believes something, she will not listen to any other opinions yeah. and she will not have a conversation. And if you don't agree with her, you're crazy. <laughs> like that's basically what it was. So no, we love Ra. Um, you know. Um, it's been great. It's been great having conversations with them far away. So it's always been like, oh my god, I miss being with them and talking to them. So thank God we have technology to return us yeah. back and to talk. And so to go back to my point, we met. Um, so we met through uh, through Ru'a. I knew her through Ru'a, and I I don't know if we talked about this in the last episode, but I did. So I I remember it, I was sitting in the bus and I opened the window. And I just tell her, and I saw Rafal walking in the area where all the buses, and I opened the window. I'm like, something bad's going to happen to you. And I just closed the window, and she was just like, "What? what's wrong with this guy? Like, what's wrong with this guy? And then literally a few <laughs> days later, she texts me on Facebook Messenger. You were right. How did you know? And I was like, maybe it's the voodoo. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I fell for it. That's that's what's bothering me until this day that I actually fell for that. And look, you might you might be bothered that you fell for it, but look at our friendship. It has blossomed. I mean, you know, <laughs> it came with perks. And it came know. with its perks, absolutely. No, I so I truly love Rafal, and ever since then we've been friends. But by the time we started actually getting closer, she moved to the UK. So she was doing her high school. And I think a bit of her middle school was there. So she was pretty busy. Was it middle school too? I moved when I moved when I started there, I was in year nine. So I don't know. I don't think that's middle school. I think that's high school. Mm -hmm. No, I because I remember like, I, I do remember like grade nine till 12, you were not here. So I, I, I knew I, was I remember being 14. That's it. That's all I remember. Like I was 14 at the time when I moved. Oh, wow. And it was all of a sudden, like it was a shock for everyone, but it was the biggest shock for me because I didn't even know I was moving. Like I thought, okay, we're going to go try and figure out the papers and see if it's actually going to work out. But then once we got there, everything was worked out and we're like, oh yeah, we are staying here. And I didn't know, like, I didn't have the chance to say goodbye to any of my friends. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, obviously, I kept coming back every three months. And I think that's what kept, like, the friendship ties between you and everyone else, the people that I still have in my life from high school, from Tamil, from middle school, from Jeddah. Like, it's because I kept coming back. And I kept, like, I just held on to these friendships so dearly and so, like, tightly because... Y'all are rare. You're a gem. 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 <laughs> Honestly, it's, I, I will agree with her is that she was really good at keeping in touch, even though she was a mess at some times. But um, <laughs> no, but she, so she, she, it was so funny because she would call my house phone. It was the times when we had mobile phones, but no one really used them. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like when you, when you were back home, no one uses their mobile phone to call. We call through house phones and it's like, the funniest thing. Most of the time, we don't have credit, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like, and, and that's the thing I think people don't understand is here in the states, like when you buy a plan, you have unlimited calls and texts yeah. at, at a given. And back home, it's like if you, you you could do that, but it costs a lot, and it's like more build to you. And when we were kids, our parents were not going to spend that much money. On yeah, us. they're like, baby, you're kids. Like you, you're <laughs> lucky you have a phone. So I remember I used to be in my like uh, my room, and then like. Uh, my family would knock on the door. They're like, hey, you have a phone call. And I'm like, oh, who's, who, who is it? And then I go and I answer and it's sort of fall from, <laughs> from London. She's like, hey, <laughs> she checks up. And the funny thing is she was right. It was a shock when she disappeared was like when me and her started getting close. So it was like yeah. so weird when she just like disappeared. I was like, wow, like that, that was a friendship that could have been that, that could have been, you know, uh, explored. But like, honestly, we explored but it. it still did. 
like even even after I moved, I, I think I think had I not moved, I don't think our friendship would have been this strong. To be, to be honest. honest, yes, and that's what I was about. I was literally going into that segue that honestly. It was sad that you went to, to to London, but I was also so happy for you because that means new opportunities. And I knew you were going to go there and, you know, blossom, get your friends and, you know, grow as a person, yeah. period. So you you did that. But also she did not forget about friendships, like specifically me, um, Ro'a, Sara Khadid. Like she used to like we, we all knew everything between us. We always called each well, other. So <laughs> it's literally the best. And the funny thing is when she used to visit Saudi like she this is something that she she does like oh I always visit I'm like yeah it's usually a shock or a surprising like visit like I, I get a, again when I tell you she calls the house phone and she, I'm like who's calling me and then I answer and then she's like hey and I'm like wait R- uh, Rafal are you <laughs> in Saudi and then she's like yeah I remember I used to always come back on Ghalia's birthday Cause that's when like my Christmas break would start, so I'd always be here in time for Ralia's surprise birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who do not know, Ralia's birthday is on December 16th, so that she is a Sagittarius. We're not going to talk about it. Excuse you, so am I. What are you on about? Uh, yeah, I know. That's what I'm gonna. Literally, her f- name on my phone is Rafal the Sag because she is just she's her and Ralia are one of the most Sagittarius people. And yeah. Lexi, I can oh. vouch for that honestly. <laughs> So no, it's. I think personally, I, I I have a lot of hate for Sagittarius, but here I am, literally close friends with all of them, and I literally love them. So I don't know why I have all this hate, but it's it, it will make sense later. You attract what you hate, baby boo. Honestly, it seems like that is the tea. So, um, what I wanted to say is, yeah. So we both, uh, like I said earlier. I, I've started my master's program in master's of uh, arts and communication. So I was blown away. I was not planning to do my master's until like September. I was just like, honestly, uh, that was almost when I was uh, finishing up my job over there. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to apply and just see what I what I get and with COVID. It just made again, it was an opportunity for everyone to reflect. So I remember I was, your planning, like your applying process like that time. And I think you kind of they don't want to be disappointed by anything. So you just kept it as like, okay, yeah, I'm going to apply and that's it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to wish for it. I'm not going to put pressure on it. I'm just going to apply and see what happens. And of course you being you, you're going to get all the amazing offers in the world. No, but don't, don't make me sound humble, like that. And you're like, no, no, not me. But obviously everybody knows it. <laughs> and you were stressed out, I think for a bit, like about, what's going to happen to you. But I just knew you were like, I knew you were going to know what you need to do. And, th- and when the time the- came, you were able to make that decision very easily. Th- that was the interesting thing. So I was just like, okay, do I like with COVID, obviously I was going to stay here and I was just like, okay, what's, what's going on? Are we going back home? Like, am I going back home? Am I staying here? Am I going to get like, am I going to work? Like, I just honestly did not know what's going on because like my, my, my job was like wrapping up so I was just like okay I need to have my next plan like I, by September and it was going to end like by January end of January so I was just like okay I'm going to start applying and I applied to like 15 schools I was like going crazy I was like here's my here's my letter here's my personal statement I was just like let me see what what I can um what I can get, I honestly just wanted to see, I just shared my research interests and I was, I just hoped for the best, to be honest. A lot of people thought I had like, it was all calculated. I was just like, no, I honestly just basically had my, I wrote down my statement and I obviously had the amazing help of all my friends and mentors who read my thing um, and told me it was great. Just apply, Said, and just believe in yourself. And honestly, I got accepted in almost every school I applied to. And some of them I got like full ride offers. Oh my God, sorry, my phone's on. Like I thought I would have a better, I, I would have a better um, etiquette. But anyways, no. You so um, anyways. yeah, I applied to all these universities, got accepted. So what a blessing. And to be honest, the best, the best offer came from University of Nebraska, Omaha. So that is where I am right now. I'm in Omaha. I love the big city. As you can see, my big apartment. You can see my little kitchen, which is so different in this apartment. And the you other have the one, most beautiful view on Earth. 
Thank you. It's a lovely view of three buildings. It's just cute. <laughs> the sign, the bird. Look, I, I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting used to living in a city because obviously in Saudi, we lived in a city. So, but living here alone in a big city and getting used to a new city is like yeah. insane. So I've been getting used to it, but honestly, I enjoy it. My DoorDash app has been just going off at me it's just like it like has to remind me my daily reminders have you ordered today have you ordered <laughs> so anyways um and obviously i said earlier that i did i ca caught covid so it, for y'all who don't know <laughs> in october i caught covid and the sad thing was i was not going out i was doing nothing my life was sad i was just like sitting at home working you were a couch potato Literally, and I'm like, and I look like one too. No, <laughs> still, do. still do. Oh my god, you're so annoying. <laughs> so yeah, that was really interesting to me. It was like I was like very hygienic, my mask up. Uh, I used to like make sure six feet, like all that interest, all those things, and I, you know, I caught it. So it was, it was a hard time for me. But thank God I didn't have really strong symptoms. Like the worst thing yeah. was. I couldn't taste or smell, which tr honestly was, is like some people was like, oh, it's not that bad. I'm like, no, it's bad when you don't taste food. It's horrible. Yeah. And like, obviously it's gotten better. Like I can taste and smell. Obviously I can taste my good tea, but um, what is something I realized about it is like, it still like lingers. It's not like at a hundred percent of how it was. So it, it's, it's been hard on that portion, but yeah. And I, and I called Rafal during, all of those times <laughs> through my application process, through, through my moving, through my COVID experience. And I literally graduated that weekend. I recovered from yeah. COVID. So you had a very busy week. Like you had a very busy time. Uh, At some points you were just one thing after the other. Honestly, but. But that's honestly, the beauty about fresh starts. I know. And that is a perfect segue <laughs> into our yeah. thing. So I was going to go, why did I pick her for this episode? Um, and I, I knew I wanted to have Rafal have her own episode because based on last year, if you guys did not know, she was a mystery guest. So I was like, honestly, it's not fair. I want to give her her full episode. And I think it should be the first one too. So And I'm so honored <laughs> to be on the first episode, as I should be. As you but, should be. Uh, <laughs> Super honored, super flattered, super shocked and surprised. Baffled, did not see this coming. As literally, we've been. What? <laughs> and the thing is, we were. I was talking to Rafal, and I was telling her. Well, so our first thing was we were supposed to do the one about friendships or relationships. We were moving around like we're like, what should we do? But then I was just like, OK, Rafal, I really want you to do the first episode because you're a familiar face. You've been on the podcast, but also I want to talk about like I want to start a different conversation, like obviously. And it's like a new season. So we want to talk about new vibes and new vibes yeah. only. So we ended up talking and then I was just like, what should we do? And she's like, maybe we should do like something, you know, about like new starts or something. I'm like, oh. I was just, uh, and then it, like the name just clicked in my head. I was like the one about fresh starts. And then she was just like, oh my God, perfect. And then yeah. it was like the most perfectly, like it was effortless the way we planned yeah. it. So it was it like, was it just clicked between us, I think. And I think what's nice about it is we both recognize right away that you're able to talk about your first starts and I able to talk about my first start so this was like a perfect I don't know perfect topic for us to speak about honestly and that's what I was thinking is like okay we're we're and we both are going like through big changes in life so my first thing was like okay we are both going through like I, it's great to talk about changes like sometimes usually change scares people mm -hmm. what, what, what would you say at a fall about like people who are scared from change Genuinely, the thing is because it's hard to speak for everyone because everyone sees things differently and everyone, you know, has different expectations of how things are going to turn out based on previous life experiences that they already had. So you can't really sit there and be like, well, no, this is how you feel about change because you never know what a person in front of you has actually gone through. For me, I've always appreciated change. I've always accepted it because throughout different mm -hmm. changes in my life, Maybe they were hard and tough at some point, but it always comes back with good things. It always comes back with positivity. It always comes back with things that I never thought would happen. 
what turns out to be the best thing to happen to me. Do you get what I mean? A like for instance, absolutely. Um, when when I was stuck here after I did my one year of uni in London. Mm -hmm. And I was stuck here because some of my papers were missing and I had to reapply for a visa. And the first three months of me being here was hell. Like I would cry myself to sleep every night. I just wanted to go back to London. I did not feel like I belonged here at all. Um, identity crisis, obviously we all go through it. And I just, I didn't want to be here. And I genuinely thought that like, my life is over. I need to get out of here. I can't wait one more year. And then slowly, slowly with time, I kind of had the time to reflect back and look at myself and look at my, just the things that define me and the things that I want to hold on to. And I realized if I went back to London, I would not grow as a person. Mm -hmm. And I just wouldn't be where I want to be in the future. And I, it was a very tough decision to make because up until the last second, up until September, I was still like yeah. deciding between London and Saudi, am I going to go back or am I going to stay? And it's like, no, I decided to stay at the place that serves me best. So I stayed here and so literally been the best decision I've ever made in my life. Most people think I'm crazy, but I... I, I personally don't think you were crazy at all. I... and those first three months where she literally was just like, I need to be back in London. I, yeah. I remember her calling me during those times and just going like, well, I don't want to be here, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Rafal, just like, you know, at the end of the day, just do you and do what makes you happy. Just reflect. Trust me, usually in order for things to get better, it needs to get worse. Yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And that's the way I think it's going to be always hard. And it's hard for me moving here too. So mm -hmm. when I when I hear your story, I'm just like, it makes me so happy because it's like Rafal, Rafal's life literally changed over after those three months. It has like changed drastically. Yep. <laughs> and I don't know when I saw that, it just reminded me of me. Like I'm, I was a person that hates change. Like I really hate change. Like I want things the same. And I think it's because like my family, like, uh, I don't know what uh, how 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 to say it, but they almost like got me used to getting things the same way forever. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just once change happens, I'm honestly used to get scared. But now, like, because you know that feeling when someone asks you or something about like that that like is something like th that requires change, right? And then you get scared. You're like, um, um, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, to me, honestly, when I yeah. feel that uncomfortability, that's when I'm like, I have to take it. Like, I have yeah. to take it. I don't know why I'm holding myself back, right? So no, I agree with you. Change is seen differently. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's bad. But majority of the time, I'm 100% sure, even in both ways, change allows for education, like for you to educate yourself and learn from your life experiences. Because if, if nothing good comes out of it, you still have a lesson that you learned from it. I genuinely, genuinely believe like throughout the toughest times of your life, and because that's just how I look at things. I, I like to be optimistic in the darkest times. I like to look at the silver lining no matter what. Because otherwise, it's very easy to be dragged into a dark hole and just keep falling more and more into it. So that's why you have to give yourself that little push that's like, no, you know what? You're going to see that tiny bit of light and you're going to hold on to it and you're going to just keep going towards it no matter what. So I feel like even in the worst situations where the change was terrible. Mm -hmm. You were still able to grow as a person by learning how to adapt to this change, by learning how to deal with this change. You still gained something out of it. So, yeah, I feel like people should just embrace change and accept it. And if you go about it in a certain way where you genuinely accept it and you're like, okay, let me see where this takes me let me maneuver this change let me try to control it a little bit i mm -hmm. think it could come back to you with good things I, I absolutely agree i think once you let change happen you will see a lot of doors open i just mm -hmm. think that's that's what it is or even if it's like bad change it just allows you to go like okay maybe i'm not supposed to be here i'm supposed to be somewhere better like you know it's just it allows you to reflect. So yeah. I think that's the same situation with... I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, 
because obviously I was nearing my graduation and there's several options that I could be doing after I finish from my bachelor's degree. I could start working, I could go do my master's, I could do my certifications that are specific to my majors like CFA. And there's so many things to think of which put me in a state of panic for a while for a long while actually that's all I could think of and it was near my finals as well so I was already stressing about my finals but then I was stressing about what's going to happen after I graduate but I still haven't graduated I still haven't received my degree I still haven't applied to other unis I still haven't done any of that and I was sitting there stressing about okay what change am I going to go to how is this going to how is this going to work out? How is this going to affect these future decisions in life? But I have these relationships that I need to focus on. I have cause, like several things and it's like, that's, that's not how change happens. You just Absolutely. have to be comfortable with it. And you have, when the time comes for it, that's when you deal with it. But sitting Absolutely. there stressing about it beforehand and literally put myself in a state of panic where I was having genuine panic attacks. Yeah not the way to go about it no absolutely i agree with you and i think i'm i'm kind of on the same page with that because um some people get lost and usually go like okay well what 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 are we doing um to make change sometimes people think oh you know what maybe i shouldn't stress about it but they think they shouldn't do any actions i'm like no do actions but then don't be stressed about them like you you only have so much control in your hands just put put your all into whatever you're doing and then just wish for the best. Like that's what I, I did with my applications. Like Rafal told, told you guys, like I, uh, I applied and I was just like, honestly, I'm not going to worry. Obviously I'm not going to be lying and tell you I wasn't stressed and I didn't check my emails for my acceptance letters or my, my admission, like my admission letters of letting me know, like if I got into the school or not, but um, the more important thing to me, I think was more like, in the realm, in the realm of, okay, I just I did my best job. I put my one hundred percent in this personal statement in my in my degree. I did great work when I was in undergrad. Honestly, I cannot stress myself anymore. I should just enjoy my life as I ha- as I what I what I have at this point, right? So no, I I agree with you. I feel like some people just uh, get stressed and they you know in order for them to outdo themselves, they outdo themselves. And it's like, and not outdo themselves professionally, but they outdo themselves mentally, which is the worst. Because you set so many expectations for yourself. And I think it's great to set, of course, you have to set expectations for yourself. You're not human if you don't. You really are not. But I think at some point, there's a difference between setting expectations to yourself and genuinely torturing yourself. Because you sit there and you put all these hopes and dreams, which is great. But you expect to reach there so quickly and so fast. And you have to like keep going at it no matter what. And if one part of the plan doesn't work out, then that's it. Everything is destroyed. Everything is ruined. So they end up mentally torturing yourself. So it's no set. I, I genuinely loved what you did when you were applying for your master's because you set that expectation. You wanted to do your master's. But at the same time, you were like, okay, if this doesn't work out, it's fine. I will still have other options. I will still go find something else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply, but I'm not going to put my whole expectations around the fact that I'm going to go do my master's. It's just, this is one option that I have. And if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't, then here are my other options. And that's what you told me when I was panicking about my future. <laughs> and I was just there and I was panicking about it. And you were telling me, like, just apply there and do this and do that. And just keep all the options open so that when the time comes and you have to choose, you don't feel like you're stuck to a certain decision. You have all these options around you and you can just pick one of them. No, absolutely. And I think... A lot of the things people forget about also is when they're setting themselves expectations and all these things that they're going through, they forget to cope. Like they don't know how they're coping with it. Sometimes you don't even know you're coping through something. So I think like this would be a a great conversation is like, how were you able to cope through like everything that was going on? I mean, every... And I don't want, and, and the thing is, 
Like I, I think I'm like coping for me is very different. Coping is different for everybody. So coping for me means I, I do two things. I think one thing is I need to be alone for this one. Like for when, when whatever the situation happens and I need to sit down and I need to mentally accept that ju- it just happened, mm-hmm. right? Digest it, think about it. And then my second way of coping is talking to people. Like I yeah. have to talk to people. If I bottle it up, it's going to get worse. It's going to become a bigger problem and it's going to affect me on a mental level that I just don't appreciate. Like I just try thinking like, okay, like there's a lot of people I call on a weekly basis and I just like, you know, I love to update them. Rafal being one of them. Hala. Like I, I talk to a lot of people and I just like tell them, okay, so what's up? Tell me like, how's everything going? Are you doing okay? How's, you know, X, Y, and Z. So to be honest with you, coping sometimes is intentional and sometimes it's not, it's not planned. Like it, it just happens. But I think it would be great. Like if you want to share Rafal, how you were able to cope through such times and like, to be honest with you, I'm still coping now, right? Like I'm coping with change, culture shock. I'm in a new city. I'm in a new degree. I'm trying to learn all these new things. So for me, I can tell you my my coping mechanism right now is rolling with the punches. It's just like, okay, I'll just keep doing it. I'll just keep doing it. I'll just keep doing it. But in order to know how to cope, I need to know what I'm tackling. And I still don't know what I'm tackling, right? But you were able, you know, when the, the whole situation about you going back to London was years ago. So you were you had time to, like, move on and reflect and also look at yourself at those times, right? So what would you say is your coping mechanism you had? I mean, like I told you earlier, for me, like, when I was, when I to, when we were talking about how when I first moved to UK and I still held on to the friendships, even after I left that's always been a very important part of my life. I value my friendships a lot, dearly. All my friends are like my second family. Mm-hmm. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we are not getting shady on this podcast. But, um, I think, you know, my staying in touch with my close friends has definitely helped me cope a lot. Just because I felt like, you know what, no matter what happens, I still have these people in my life. I still have my support system around me. Um, That's number one. Number two, when my problem is I'm an overthinker. I'm not an overthinker when it comes to things about me. You know, I don't overthink about, oh, what I'm going to wear and what what does this person think? I overthink about my life, what's happening. Situations. Situations. So I sit there and I have 6,000 thoughts running through my head. And and the crazy you know, thing about you, about it is Rafal is always quiet about it. Yeah. Yeah. You'll never, <laughs> you'll never, <laughs> you'll never know. She sits there and she's just like quiet yeah. and like in her Sagittarius state, obviously. <laughs> she stays quiet, does not say anything, but then you can like... I don't know. I I think after like a few years, I started realizing like Rafal, like me and her would have FaceTime calls. She would be on her laptop. She wouldn't be saying anything, but I can just yeah. read it now on her. You can face. see it. You can see when I'm overthinking. Like you can. See I can it. see when she's overthinking. I can see when she's sad. It's so yeah. funny. It's like I start catching her. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I remember a time I spoke to her, and then she was just like, uh, and she was stuck in London because she wanted to go back to Saudi because of COVID that like, that's when it hit, like what that was supposed to be like a, a week's vacation and it turned into a month. It a 10-day vacation. And I went in March and ended up coming back end of May. Yeah. Like, yeah. and you were just, and I remember her calling me and she's just like, I'm done. I just want to go back. I just want to go back. And, but like, honestly, one of the things I think that she also used to cope was she cooks and it's literally the most hilarious thing because she actually cooks really well. But I think what's funny for me is um, she always makes fun of it. Like, and if you, obviously for people who do not know what to fall uh, on her Snapchat, it is a, um, it is a day. <laughs> she <laughs> just like goes off, starts like talking in this squeaky voice, just like mocking every chef I've ever heard. <laughs> And it's honestly, you have to have fun with it. If you're if you're enjoying it, you have to have fun with it at the same time. And yeah, I mean, if you if we talk about COVID time, <laughs> this, is, this is what we need to talk about when it comes to coping, because we all had to learn how to cope then. Oh, I, I genuinely think till this day, 
I, I don't think people understand how much it actually has affected us. And I think till this day, I'm still recovering from that time. Same here. Yeah, 100%. Like till this day, I have things that are happening and I'm like, oh, it's because of, it's because of quarantine. It's because of COVID. Like it's some things you still have to learn how to cope with them. Honestly. But yeah, I mean, if we go back to COVID and how we coped with that, we specifically me and you coped a lot by staying in touch like oh. every day. We and literally we talked every day. day. Yeah, every day. Like that. that's how we cope. And then because I was in London and um, it was easier for me to get fresh ingredients. I'm like, <laughs> well, she was, I remember what, she was so happy at this one day. Yeah. She did like the salmon and marinated it. And she like did this whole drama. Like she was just like, honestly, I'm a chef. She did these roasted veggies. But you know what's funny is because I caught COVID in, in UK. I was literally one of the first people to catch COVID. And the funny thing is she did not know she had it at the time. Yeah, She's like, I didn't I'm know. sick. I think I have it, but I'm I'm fine. And I'm like, Rafal, are you okay? She's like, yeah, don't worry. I'm okay. Literally. And I was like so worried. I'm like, oh, I'm so worried about Rafal. I just hope she's okay. Literally two hours later, she calls me playing a piano. <laughs> and I'm like, I honestly don't feel bad for her anymore. <laughs> I was learning the weekend song. <laughs> Which song was it? <laughs> oh, Blinding Lights. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, which, which one? And the fu- funny thing is she she played it like 9,000 times on the call. And, and it's it, literally like 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 five seconds. Five <laughs> seconds. And the thing is, she would get the start down. And at the end, she would go like, Beep! and it was like, yeah, that didn't work. She would keep repeating it, thinking it's going to change when she's doing the same <laughs> the same key and you know like i just remembered because i lost my taste and smell and this one day i decided i want to make shepherd's pie from scratch oh <laughs> she was feeling creative <laughs> baby hours in the <laughs> kitchen putting all these vegetables and spices and like the mashed potato with the milk and the butter and like perfected it you know like beautifully perfect she put love into that shepherd's pie i put, i always put love into everything i cook that's one thing i will say i always put love into it and i feel and like i'm so it. sad like ever since i left saudi she starts doing these nights where she cooks for everyone and i'm like yeah it's great to have them thanks to the fall for telling me your whole menu i'm not gonna be able to eat them but she does great food i always like when i watch and and she usually gives me also tips on how to cook because yeah. I was also learning how to cook <laughs> in COVID. Uh, if, if you guys don't remember the last episode with, uh, not the last episode, but the episode with Ashley where um, I was talking about cooking. I, I, I learned a lot of cooking. And in those times, I even remember that time she called me with the piano. I think it was like 10 p.m., 11 p.m. my timing. And I was like cooking like some rice dish. And she's like, said, you're doing this wrong. You need to do this. You need to do this. And I'm like, oh. I don't even but, remember that. <laughs> what? I don't remember that. You don't? And you told me when you cook the rice, you have to have it on the lowest heat. And that's what my mom uh, told me. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, no, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And I like was like stubborn. And then obviously I had mashed potatoes uh, of rice made out of rice. Um, it was the worst, but it's fine. We learn, you know, we live and learn. So we live and learn. But yeah, my poor shepherd's pie after <laughs> spending so much hours cooking it. Couldn't even eat it because I had no taste or smell. So I, Worth it. It. I take a spoonful. <laughs> and my mom had COVID at the time as well. So she takes a spoonful. And then my little brother was there who didn't. I mean, pretty sure he had COVID, just didn't have any of the symptoms. Yeah. And he and he was he's pretty young. So I feel like even if you yeah. got him, like it's not going to be like that. Yes. And then we tasted absolutely nothing. So that's that's when that's when that's when COVID like <laughs> quarantine hit me. That's when I started crying and I was like, no. I think it was like end of March. It wasn't at end of March, like start of April when yeah. that happened. And I was just like, oh my god, Rafal, like please just take care. And the like I think the interesting thing is just like it's just seeing yourself like I think such un- unfortunate times allows you to again reflect so I was able to like reflect a lot about myself and um a lot of things personally like what I should do with my life and where should I move forward so it's just like I was talking but we should we should probably talk about 
the changes she's going through because she has a big girl job. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just an internship. But... <laughs> but, you know, after an internship, usually you get hired. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very funny way that I got this internship. It's not really funny. So <laughs> it's not funny because she worked her yeah. butt off. <laughs> so near senior year, first of all, I don't know if it's called senior year or junior because I ended up graduating in three years rather than four years. So my junior year was technically my senior year. You could say just my final year. My final year. Anyway, so <laughs> problem year. solving. <laughs> look at us. <laughs> I think it's my master's degree. It's coming to use. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, side. <laughs> no, go, go ahead. I'm just pull out all your. Pull out my <laughs> research method. Do you want me to do? No. <laughs> Go Let's ahead. not talk about research methodology because I just finished that course and I never went. Oh my! Which it's research really method was? Don't ask me questions. I will not. Be- <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, you got it here. Rafal is illiterate. No. <laughs> if you think I put okay, like just in case my teacher is seeing this, I loved that course so much. <laughs> put in all the effort in the world, learns everything, but no, worst course on earth. Uh, (laughs) i thought mine was gonna be the worst i took quantitative methods which means numbers 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 statistics ours was basically like we had to um survey serve like think of a topic and then so it's it's more it's more qualitative it's not yes 100 percent qualitative but we had to do surveys and we had to send them out and all Mm -hmm. that yeah, I'm taking that next semester on in the grad level, so I'm just like, oh, I'm so scared. But like, I did, if I can do quantitative, I can do qualitative. I'm not worried about it. But yeah, uh, fresh starts. <laughs> <laughs> Continue talking about. Um, so you, you you basically said that um, you she obviously played it down as usual. She underestimates it. She's just like it's just an internship. But no, no. no but here's here's the thing. So as I was entering my final year, obviously. Um, in order to graduate, we have to do a co-op training. So we have to do an internship. We have to log in certain hours um, for the university to give us our degree. We cannot graduate without doing an internship. So obviously that's something I had to think about from earlier because I needed to decide where I'm going to do my internship in order to get my degree. Um, and anytime anyone would ask me, where are you going to do your internship? Bear in mind, I did nothing to like say this, I did not apply, did not do anything. But anytime someone would ask me, where are you going to do your internship? I'd be like, Ernest and Young. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, you applied. That's and a I'm Sagittarius like, answer. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, you applied. And I'm like, no. And they're like, but so you're, you're going, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like it was a given. Like for me, that's where I'm going to go. I don't care what anyone says. I'm going to go do my internship there. Fast forward a couple of months. Um, I receive an email from the university saying Ernest and Young is doing a competition called Corporate Finance Woman of the Year. So I was like, you know what? Let me let me just go into it. And I literally applied and I didn't tell anyone. Usually I tell people like, oh my God, I applied into this. I hope I genuinely applied and I just forgot about it. Um, so I applied and then a week later, so when you apply, it's basically like you're applying for a job. Mm-hmm. A week later, I got an email saying, um, we checked your application. You can now move on to the next step of the process, which is the games. So I don't know if you know, but most um, companies, especially international companies, you have to do these like IQ games. And like, mm-hmm. it's the weirdest thing ever. Personality <laughs> tests and all that. No, no, it's not a personality test. It's just literally like, games like iq games it's Mm. it's genuinely one of the hardest things i've done and i've done a level math so (laughs) (laughs) those ig kids man (laughs) so um so i did the games thing Mm -hmm. did the games thing like i said super hard super super hard and i was like yeah no for sure i failed this because you don't get to do an interview if you failed the games if you don't get a certain passing rate So then I finished the games and heard nothing for two weeks. So I was like, okay, for sure I failed. And then I got an interview. And then after I finished the interview, I got into the competition. 
um, made it all the way to the top six finalists in Saudi. So the competition was Corporate Finance Women of the Year. Um, there's three stages to the competition where one, you have to talk about yourself, um, give a speech, um, solve a case study. Mm -hmm. All in all, it was such a great, wonderful experience. And the winner of the competition moves on to the global competition and wins an internship. Only the winner. I didn't win, but I still got given an internship. Okay, flex on us, flex. Just saying, they saw me and they didn't want to get rid of me. Like, what can I say? And that was a a really (laughs) proud moment for me. Like when I, when when I saw her go through this, because I even remember her before she did her presentation, she called me and she was just like, "Sayid, I just want you to hear." And I was, I was like, "I'm so proud of you. Like, I'm. This is great. I think." I my speech, like, remember when I was giving you the speech? I was like, "Yeah, emotions." strings playing in the background to kind of tug at your heart <laughs> it was a very like full-on speech. a melodrama like it was a full vampire yeah. diary series like it was like what's going on who's going that like it was really good though I, I was i sat with it and I, I heard it and i was like yeah you're gonna do good i'm, I'm 100 i mean from like from the judge's perspective that's what they said they liked the most out of everything i presented so I'm very happy I went with that dramatic speech. <laughs> no, absolutely. But th- th- and that's something I'm realizing even more and more and more, even in my master's degree right now. And even in my personal statement, people love stories. People love yeah. vulnerability. If you can show vulnerability and vulnerability, sometimes people hear the word vulnerability and think, oh, you need to cry. I'm like, no, it's not about crying. It's about showing emotions and being confident with it like in just knowing you know it's funny you say that because throughout the competition there was a mentor with us guiding us through everything and she was telling me she she was saying Rafal you have to show more of yourself you have to show them who you are you have to let them in mm-hmm. speak about yourself speak about your experiences get break because I I genuinely I mean you know this about me I don't mind getting personal I don't mind sharing she anything doesn't. i'm a very open person she's an open book yeah i really am though like it's not like not <laughs> in a cliche, cliche way but i really am because i genuinely don't have i just feel like there's no need for me to like hold back anything about myself absolutely you shouldn't yeah so when she was telling me that because for me it's like oh is, is would this be unprofessional because obviously when you go into a career area you you have to think about certain things so for me it's like is sharing too much unprofessional and she's like no we love that that makes us feel more comfortable around you so share more about yourself get personal with it you have to show passion for it otherwise you're just a robot sitting in front of them absolutely no i agree with you i, I even when i did mine my, my personal statement for graduate school and i let i had my mentors read it and they were like saeed you know and i first did it like almost like a descriptive resume at one yeah. point. And then they're like, Said, like, obviously, these are amazing things you've done, but where's the personality? Where's you in this? Yeah. And then I was just like, okay, I had to rethink this. And then I was like, well, I need to add story to this. I need to add, I need to add me in it. Like, how can I make this? Like, how can I make this interesting, a story, fun, attention grabbing? So I had to just change it. Oh, on- you know all about attention grabbing. I know. That, oh my- that shouldn't be hard for you. Oh my God. No, it's insane. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I wish I could say, but um, yeah, trust me, I, I I know everything about attention grabbing. And I, I swear people think I do it on purpose. It is just the way I am. I, I'm the type of guy who is scared of, like, I'm starting to get more comfortable with silence. Yeah, but I'm like, if there's no silence, I fill in the gaps. Like that's how I think of me. You feel the need to fill in the gaps. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just like, no, like, and and that's something my mentor like also taught me. It was just like, you know, sometimes you just gotta let things happen. Like just yeah. just chill, calm down. Um, I miss her, uh, but yeah. Uh, long story short, I really think it is great when you put your vulnerability in such mm-hmm. projects because it adds the human aspect to mm-hmm. the professional aspect. And that's what people want. People are here. Why do you think movies on all these things work out? Because it's all about narratives. It's all about story t- storytelling. So I think it's great. And yeah. you, I, I'm just so proud of you that you 
you know, you got you 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 graduated. She walked this past uh, oh, spring, and <laughs> it, she looked so. I was like, oh, oh, that was I'm so glad. I genuinely, I mean, I, at first I was complaining about the whole graduation walk and everything, but I came to realize like what a blessing it is for me to have been able to do that in the first place to have the opportunity to walk during COVID. Uh, same here. I. Yeah. Mine was in October, and it was in person with masks, with 4,000, 3,000 people at the same. I, I still blow my mind. I was just like, but at that point, I recovered from COVID. So I was just like, yeah, honestly, I, if I get it again, honestly, at yeah. this point. <laughs> and you know what's great? Because out of this came the opportunity for both our universities to film our graduation and to have more people around the world watch it so i was able to watch your graduation and you were able to watch my graduation absolutely and that's what i said in my uh like when i was sending out like you know the link for everyone to watch it i sent out like i, I sent people like messages like telling them hey watch it here watch it here and like yeah. i started like sadly we cannot be physically together but we can virtually and emotionally be together yeah so um and honestly it was sad, obviously, not having my parents here. They were planning to come, so it was really that. That was hard for me. But on the other, on the other hand, I'm just like, well, now I'm in my master's program, so they could come for my master's graduation. They could come for you, yeah. So I'm just like, maybe this is a sign, like from God. Maybe he's like, this is not your final degree. And I was just like, oh my God. So, yeah, no, I was very happy. But she got her internship. She's going to be working I for got it, but yeah. here's where another change comes. <laughs> so I, I mean, you already know this, but I got the internship, but it's in a different city. Oh, she's going to be. A yes. Uh, she, I, I think you're moving. So, gonna... far, so far, I'm still not sure if the moving is still going to happen, which is another hard. It's not really hard, but it's just something you have to like adapt to accepting the unknown because till now I still don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to be moving because so far they're still working from home. Mm -hmm. So if we are working from home, then for sure I won't be moving to just be working from home. So yeah. And, and you are moving to Riyadh, correct? Yeah. And that is if you move and you're like, I want to stay in Jeddah. <laughs> you, guys, you have to understand if, if you've never lived in Saudi before, there's like always a constant war going on between the cities. So each city thinks this. I mean, I think that's the case. In it, it, it's like a rivalry. It's not like a physical yeah. war. <laughs> For all yeah, it's literally, it's literally a rivalry. Because we, growing up, like we always thought, yeah, Jeddah City. Is, I mean, till now, I think Jeddah City is the best. The best. Honestly. And the best people. I mean, Jeddah has the beach. That alone is enough. <laughs> like, period. It has the beach. The people. My, my sister past. lives in my sister lives in Riyadh. She's been living there Mine for the past week. until till till now. She's not able to adapt because my sister just loves the beach, just wants to be at the beach twenty four seven. And obviously, Riyadh doesn't have the beach. Um, it's literally so landlocked. It's gonna be interesting if I do move. We'll see what happens. And, and this is something I'm ready for. When I'm talking to people here, and specifically now so, since we're in summer, people usually go like, well, how do you like, uh, do you like, uh, are you going to go swim and stuff? Honestly, I was just like, there is no beach. Like, well, second best beach or the first best beach, I'm, I have not actually decided, was Egypt. Egypt's yeah. beach is amazing, but Saudi's beach is special. I don't know why. Yeah. Uh, I went to the beach in Turkey. It's fine. I'm not a fan. I went to the one in California in San Diego. It was okay. Um, it's it, it's a beautiful scenery, but to swim in it, it's different. Like it's the water, yeah. the like, feeling the sand. I hate. I get so annoyed when I put my feet on the shore and I can feel rocks and seashells yeah. and all that stuff in the sand. I'm like, oh no, I'm already getting PTSD. I right mean, now. I wish I wish you were still here because um, obviously now with like Saudi. 2030 vision and everything um people are discovering more and more islands around not islands just areas of swimming around saudi and there's an area here uh, it's very close to jeddah um apparently it's been around for a while like people have known about it for a while but mm -hmm. only now people are going it's called bayada mm -hmm. and it's just the most beautiful area ever because the water is so shallow and clear i and 
gorgeous. And Good I feel talent. like if you were here, you would rent that boat every weekend and get over there and just sit in your little pineapple floaty. <laughs> <laughs> if, oh my God. I'm so like, I'm so jealous when I see stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I love clear water. And that, that, that is my thing. And I don't know. I, I, I need to go swim soon. I really want to, and I'm hoping to. So, but, um, so we've talked, you know, you've done your chain. Mine is obviously, a, I've told you guys earlier, but I, um, I'm currently working at the University of Nebraska Omaha as a graduate assistant. So obviously learning, 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 and also studying at the same time. So that's my fresh start and being in a new, a new city, starting a new season. And I wanted to have it a fall because we both, uh, I don't know, we both understand each other. We both have the same, I don't know how to explain. We both, our souls uh, match. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, obviously, her reactions and um, her personality does not match mine. <laughs> I'm cra- I'm crazy. She's calm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I to go off. Never mind. <laughs> She's like, oh, that's cute. Okay, never mind. What do you mean? She's like, I'm about to go out. Like, meet me in the parking lot. <laughs> but um, so for the people who are listening, what you can tell listeners who are hoping to make change? I feel like an personally an important thing to note is that you know sometimes you might be going through things in life and you personally want the change to happen and you want the change to start and I think it's important to differentiate between do you really want a fresh start or are you just running away from your problems because if you go into a fresh start with problems that are still lagging lacking in the background like they're still there you know Absolutely. And you want to have that fresh start. It is never going to work out for you because you're just constantly on a run, hiding from your problems, running away from them. You'll never get that satisfaction that you want. You'll never get to, maybe you'll get to the place where you want to be, but maybe you'll be unhappy. Your, me- your mental you- capacity, you your 100%. mental state is not where your goal is, you know? So... I, change I do agree change with that. is important. Change is great. Change can be the most amazing thing to happen to you. If you want it, you have to make sure you want it for the right reasons. If it comes to you, you just have to learn how to accept it and learn how to grow with it and learn how to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And I know, and I think just never push change away. Just absolutely try try your best to learn how to deal with it because genuinely, genuinely not just from my personal experience, from the people around me, from seeing their experiences, everyone who went through change or went through sudden change um, really appreciated it later on in life. Absolutely. And, and, you know, personally, I believe God has a plan for everyone. And if you don't see what the reasoning behind it for it, behind it is for now. Sorry, I had a little like moment. (laughs) (laughs) it's <laughs> happening um you'll definitely see the reason behind it later on in the future absolutely so it just takes patience and perseverance absolutely i <laughs> agree with that i don't have any difference to say like i really think about that I, I i think the only thing i would add to that is just go out and get it if you want mm-hmm. change don't sit down and just wait for it yeah. start the initial like the steps to start the process but um, don't stress about it. Just do your do your part and do the best you could do, the best version of yourself, and then just hope the best. And I think and always stay true to who you are. That is the most important thing. Thank you. And hold on to your values, no matter what. You know, your values is what makes you who you are, mm-hmm. and it is the most important thing. Because if you're gonna do something that goes against your values, you're never gonna be happy. So just hold on to your values. Stay true to who you are. As cliche as that sounds, but again, <laughs> I swear, as we grow older, those Tumblr quotes that you hear. <laughs> oh, story. I was on the phone with Rezo the other day, who's going to be in the third episode, I believe, um, yeah. with me, the one about modeling. So keep a lookout on that. But um, we are talking and we, I was just saying the most like cliche, cheesy Bumper words, sticker vibes. Like for some reason... <laughs> I don't know why it's connecting with I'm like, wow, life is like we used to make fun of these quotes because we're like, oh yeah, sure. <laughs> and it's like actually stuff. And sometimes it's like 
people just get so used to quotes, but they like seeing them and hearing them, but they never actually apply them. I think is the difference. Yeah, one hundred percent. When you apply them, it that's why people keep repeating them. That's yeah. why they are cliche. So I think it's, I think it's important to have that. So you know, we were talking about coping. We were talking about change, and so here's the one thing. Speaking of change, my playlist changes twenty four seven. I'm. I can listen to what came out <laughs> yesterday. I can listen to what came out in the 80s and the 90s. I love rhythm and blues. So I love R&B. Um, but let, so tell me, what music have you been listening to lately? You're going to be very disappointed. I just haven't, I haven't been. I'm always disappointed my... with you with this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing is, I don't know what is it with me recently where She's I'm like, just not playing as theory. much music as before. And if I am playing music, it's just throwback songs throwback songs make me very happy old 2000 hits um mm -hmm. jake i'm always listening to j cole you know that that's one thing that's never going to change i will yeah. always be listening to j cole listening, j. Cole. To albums, listening to his old albums that's it did she introduce um, me to also like kanye west's music too it's like i used to listen to kanye west it's not mm -hmm. like i did i'm not that uncultured but like she gave me those songs that you know he doesn't have music videos for or they didn't become like a big <laughs> Uh, big single that and she listens to a lot of Kendrick too um, I've been listening to like um, meditation music a lot <laughs> fresh starts <laughs> I have like a meditation <laughs> playlist that's the thing so I've I'm not great at meditating I, I at least I thought I'm not until I realized meditation is not literally just sitting there and like yeah. closing your eyes and thinking deeply because that's I would never be. I can't. I can't just sit there with my thoughts. I'd go crazy. <laughs> I, I I feel like meditation for me, but it has to be guided. Like I'm the person. I, I believe meditation is genuinely what brings you calmness. Anything that just brings you calmness while you're sitting there and you're doing it, any sort of activity. Um, so recently it's just meditation music that's been playing in the background. But other than that, like, I don't think I've been listening to much music. Okay. Um, I'm listening to two artists a lot. Oh, what's her name? The girl from Olivia. What's her name? Olivia Rodriguez. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> we are shutting down. Let me let me close. I've been listening to her music <laughs> nonstop. Oh my god! No, <laughs> I'm see. That's one thing. I'm not. I don't get the. I don't get. The thing is, it's because like TikTok and it's just songs that are constantly playing. But that's if the you, thing. If you want to know a song that's I've been constantly not listening to, but singing out loud. It's, um... No, I see yeah. the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> well, TikTok does that. Like, it's really, I don't, it's so interesting to me how TikTok makes like really old music. Yeah. Like, back in like, uh, uh, like obviously it was used, it was sampled in Poetic Justice by Kendrick, but it's by Janet Jackson. Um, the in the thunder rain. Oh my God. I just like, I'm so obsessed when I see it on TikTok. I like want to do yeah. the, you know, poet, like, you know how they're like moving the, the shirt in the air and I'm like, ah, I want to do that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I'm not going to blame you. I'm, I've been going back to a lot of music. I listen to Brandy. I listen to Erica Badu. I listen to, mm -hmm. um, you know, I listen to a lot of Janet Jackson lately too. Like, I don't know. I just go back to a lot of old, I've been going a lot to old music. But I also listen to, you know, I love Tyler, the creator. He's right here. My baby boy. Um, Harry Styles. Harry Styles, too. I've not been listening to his music as much. I've been listening to more Tyler, the creator. And honestly, ASAP Rocky. I've been listening to his old music, too. Testing is one of my favorite albums. I don't feel like it popped off like it should have. No, 100%. But, but yeah, I, I, like, um, I like listening to like artists that are not very known like they don't get enough credit underground i'm like oh who are your artists and then she's and, and, and she's like katie perry <laughs> <laughs> he is underground <laughs> no it, no but like you'll find a lot of these like random artists on my phone mm -hmm. um that's why i literally can't think of anyone in specific but i'll um Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and TikTok, and I'll share all these places. <laughs> well, you did a perfect segue, so we are close to wrapping things up. Sadly, 
So I know um, how it goes. Uh, you know how it goes. You watch. <laughs> oh, I'm, joking. I, I'm a loyal watcher to this show. Honestly, I appreciate it. Oh my god, it made me so happy when you know the Spotify end of year results thing comes, and everyone was like for their po- most watched podcast. Like they sent me mine, and I'm like that actually like blow my mind. Blows my mind. Like I I told you I did this thinking like two three people are gonna hear it like per week. I did not think like it's going to be as to where it was my last season. And I hope, you know, it could be bigger this year. Obviously we always. Okay. Hope. Humble queen. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I, no but- I genuinely, I knew it would pop off. I would, I knew it would do great. Um, and I said it, I said it to you a couple of days ago on FaceTime. Like I told you how proud I am. It was making you. me so mushy gushy. <laughs> I was like, no, but like- I genuinely am because again, I I said it on the phone and say it again. You've just made use of every opportunity you had in front of you. You did not leave anything behind, and you stayed true to yourself world. throughout it as well. And I'm just so proud of you for it. So I, any like you just deserve the best of the best. Don't, don't do that. Don't don't no, let it get to your head. Stop. <laughs> no, it's getting to my head. <laughs> no, I I appreciate. I appreciate you a lot. I this is why I love my like this is one my friendship with Rafal is always like she gives she affirms me a lot. I affirm her a lot in different ways. <laughs> yes. Her eyes is like, okay, sure. Um but no, but I, we do, I we always push ourselves to be like the best. Absolutely. When it when we become serious, that's yeah. where things get things and, like, get you done. keep me in check, I keep you in check, and that's very I, important. Absolutely. And that's why I appreciate her. So since we are wrapping up, tell viewers your social media and just, you know, shout out your social media. So where literally they everything is Rafal al Harbi, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's many of us out there. <laughs> just search that through any, just don't do Facebook because who does Facebook anymore? Apart oh from my God. Well, don't do Facebook. <laughs> I still kind of use it, but like, I don't use it. Like, I don't know how to explain it with you, explain uh-huh. it to you, but Anyways, so thank you. I want to say thank you so much to my lovely little father. So before so we, we head out, I have a couple of things to say. So um, please join us next week where we will have the episode, the one about traveling with the lovely Katie Brust. And if you, some people are like, oh, who's Katie Brust? Um, if you've seen my iconic uh, just Starry Night in Jerusalem jacket, she's the one who painted it. And Absolutely she's Absolutely come- beautiful. I know, right? She's such an amazing artist. People were like, who is she? Who is she? And honestly, she's just an amazing artist. I can't wait for you guys to see her ne- uh, her episode next week. Please, please follow, share. It's going to be awesome. So before we end up, you know, I got to see my little lines. So for more information and content, please check out SaeedDeBoer.com. That is SaeedDeBoer.com. Subscribe and rate the podcast on the platform you're listening to. And also just follow my Instagram. If you want firsthand information, the best source for you to go to is uh, Saeed Deboer literally nothing else on my, on Instagram. It's my public account. I really p- post the majority of my updates there. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. And I want to say thank you to my beautiful, lovely guest. It's a great way for me to start the season. You already set the tone. I felt loved. I felt connection to in this. I'm uh, super, super happy to have been here. And again, it's really a privilege. Like I'm not just saying that. So I'm going to genuinely, it's 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 an honor. (laughs) It's an honor. It genuinely is. And I'm so happy to have done this. Thank you so much. Um, I love you. (laughs) <laughs> that was uh, I, I just gave myself PTSD but anyways <laughs> thank you so much and I'll see you guys all next week we'll wrap the uh, we'll, we'll see you all in the next episode and I just I just want to end off with two things first one is um, an Nicki Minaj line bro people should never laugh <laughs> <laughs> and my last thing is um uh, Thank you. You know, it's time to close the house. Put your shoes you on. No, you could have just ended that so beautifully and like so, you know, like <laughs> Bro, people should never laugh. It's like my favorite. They really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I love you. We will end. See you guys later. Bye.